Morning folks. I'm doing something a little different today. I'm doing a little backpacking trip. No wild camping involved, though I am camping. I am doing the home valley circuit or circular um, in, in and around Home Firth, that sort of area. It's a 24 mile walk. Uh, today I'm going to walk 14 miles to a campsite, sort of uh, above Home Firth. And then tomorrow I'm going to walk uh, 10 miles. So far so good, I'm about two miles in. But there's a lot of bloody up and down around here, it's very early. I've got a reasonable sort of weather window looking at the forecast, although there's still, it's still a chill in the air, it still feels a bit, I don't know, still a feel of winter. Even though there's a few signs of spring, I've seen some bumblebees. I've heard a chiff chaff and there's been a great spotted woodpecker drumming, all spring signs. But yeah, already <laughs> I'm encountering mud. In fact, I need to go that way. So first landform of significance on the trail, just above my finger there, Castle Hill. And I'll speak to you again when we get up there. Look after, all that up there, and uh, ready to grow it and put in that tackle out. You see that farm there? Yeah. Yeah, you saw me the last two. I've just had the most wonderful experience, really heartwarming experience. I've just been talking to this 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 wonderful gentleman, George Worthington, he told me his name was, he's 90 in a couple of weeks. He told me, he walks around here every day. And he's, he's just, oh, what an interesting man. He told me, just across there where a Lancaster bomber crashed during the war and the bodies are buried at the church at Farnley Tyas. I'm going to have a look for that when I get there because that's on the route. He told me about a bloke who hung himself in the valley bottom down here, he said a really creepy spot, funny feeling, I think I'm walking that way, telling me all about the landscape, the hers that used to be here. Oh, a fascinating man. They were telling me he took one of the last flights of Concorde across the Atlantic and on the plane with him was Robert De Niro. What a story that is. What an absolute gentleman. Tell you what, if I don't get cracking, I'm not going to get to this bloody campsite. I keep talking to everybody. Just been stopped again by this local fella telling me all about his wonderful retirement touring Britain in a caravan. Castle Hill, where I've just come from, it's a muddy path. It's a very interesting uh, feature historically. Uh, I did take a picture of the information board, if it's clear enough I'll show you, but yeah, it's been occupied by man since Neolithic times. They found flint up there, flint arrowheads. Um, and then I know, I think the hill was reshaped with banks and ditches during the Iron Age. On the map, it tells you that there's a, a Mott and Bailey castle. They're Norman, aren't they? Um, and then you've got the, the Queen Victoria's Tower. So yeah, uh, a lot gone on at Castle Hill down the years. Interesting place. Ow, bloody hell. It's got a thorn then. I can remember my last visit to Castle Hill 29 years ago, 1995, the summer of 1995. And I'd just graduated. And I got a job that summer, a temporary job, working as a field archaeologist on Marsden Moor, uh, looking, at tra looking for traces of Mesolithic occupation, flints and stuff, right, good it was. Anyway, our digs were the student halls of residence in Huddersfield, the big tall building, our right on top floor. Fantastic uh, couple of months that were. Um, but what I used to do sometimes in the evening, after, after being up on moors, I'd, I'd walk up to Castle Hill. And in them days, there was a pub on top. It got burnt down a few years ago in a suspicious fire. Anyway, good pub it were. I remember going up there one night and having a right skimful. And I also remember <laughs> chatting to a, a, a really nice French girl. It were, yeah, really nice evening up there. Really, really enjoyed myself that night. <sighs> Seems like yesterday as well. Nine or 30 years ago. Ooh. 
stuck. I think this valley bottom, somewhere around here, must be the place where George told me that chap hung himself all those years ago. Oh, look at these, one of my favourite wildflowers, wooden enemies, also known as the windflower. Proper indicator of old woodland. Absolutely gorgeous. I've just come through finally Tyus, I've just stopped at St Lucian's Church, nice to see it open. They were uh, like a little community group, an eco group there, they're like an eco church making the, trying to improve the biodiversity in the churchyard which is, which is a nice thing. I'm, I'm not making very good time, I, I keep yapping to people. Oh yeah, I had a, a quick look in the churchyard there for, for the Ehrman's graves that Josh told me about. Um, it turns out the plane wasn't a Lancaster, it was a Wellington, um, somebody told me. Um, but anyway, didn't, didn't find the graves, but someone did tell me there's a memorial on the crash site um, near where I walked, but I didn't see that. I've just spied something slightly off route. It's like the black monolith, I've got to go and investigate this. And what a view beyond to West Nab, Black Hill a bit more that way. And it's not a monolith at all, it's an old gate post. Full of bird droppings. New landscapes are good, aren't they? You see, you get, you get note like this near me. I think this is a field of wheat. Totally different feel to the landscape, all interesting stuff. <laughs> Do you know, just look at that, bloody hate peevishness like that. Someone tried to block a rabbit hole. So after that swift pint, the rose and crown in Thurston land, and back out into more open country. There's plenty of brass around here, you know, there's lovely properties. It's a uh, yeah, prosperous area of, of Cleck Uddersfax, this. Who used to say Cleck Uddersfax? Is that Mike Harding? I've done so well getting this far and I've just really found a right slutchy field now and I think my feet are wet. Not done bad though, considering the rain we've had lately. I've just had a little stop back there. I've not had much to eat, eat today. I've not had much refreshment at all, save for that pint in pub. Uh, so yeah, I've just had 10 minutes back there, finished off my chicken satay. And I've also, nice seasonal milestone, I've just seen my first swallow at you. And I think that's only my second ever swallow in March. Normally first, second week of April for me, for swallows I always think. Look at that right in the middle there below where West Nab, the numeds torching the mowers. It's a nice style.
I'm just approaching the village of Hepworth. Just across the brook down there. Don't know what's in Hepworth, but there's any shops or anything. Still got plenty of food really, I don't think I need to buy out. Oh, this is good. Like a trough or a well. Well that's me leaving Hepworth, charming village that, lovely, had a pub, really nice interesting old buildings, lots of date stones and now I'm back onto field, oh lambs, see them lambs anywhere behind me there, anywhere, anyway, um, yeah I'm onto open fields, I'm not sure how far I've walked maybe 10 miles this, so about four to go. Feeling it now, a lot of up and down on this walk. You're going across hilltops, then you plunge down into valleys, back up hills, plunge down again. It's hard going. I'm just having quarter of an hour or so on, on this lane here. It's a good name this lane, it's called Snittlegate. I've just checked the map of about two miles to go, yet my step counter on my, uh, on my watch is saying I've done nearly 13 and a half miles and, it, and it's pretty accurate that, so maybe the undulations of the land um, make it a bit more than 14 miles, but oh, well, I'm, ready, I'm ready to get there now, although I've, I've just stopped, I've had some peanuts and like a cereal bar. Um, and it, I think that's giving me a bit of a boost, I should be alright for the last, last couple of miles. Anyway, I'll uh, probably speak to you again next time when I get to the campsite, unless there's something uh, earth shattering happens in the meantime. Bloody hell, just found a little olive in Max Walls. We're near a ruin called Hades or Hades, and the owner has made this really nice name thing out of, out of bits at wall and stuff. The theme of today is nice, interesting people. I've just bumped in, uh, just bumped into a subscriber back there. Voodoo Ray and his family, what a bunch of lovely people. Had a right good chat with him. He told me a lot about this area, I've, uh, I've learned quite a bit from that conversation. So, lovely to meet you, Ray, fantastic that. This is the life, I'm so glad to get here. Oh, and it's a beautiful evening. And there's peewits in the fields there displaying and calling. Fantastic. I need to get changed now, I'm slutched up. Get changed. It's a beautiful site, this. It's costing me 15 quid, which. <laughs> it's dealing with what I'm used to from the old days, but a lot better than the last site I stayed on. The facilities are spotless. Uh, it's immaculate, really nice site this. Um, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a guided tour, I think. Just show you the gents. <laughs> really nice. Can I that lovely? Skip a detailer. I had to peg my smalls out, a bit damp. Look at that, placky bags in me, in me pumps to keep me, uh, to keep me fresh socks dry. Oh, this is divine. What a lovely springtime evening. It's Easter, Easter Saturday today, Good Friday today, Easter Sunday tomorrow. Uh, 31st of March tomorrow, Easter's early. Right, here we go again. I'm going to try and put this on the gas canister 
Ah, to Christ, I just nip myself with it now. <laughs> oh, I'm rubbish, aren't I? All right, I'm going to try and put this. I'm trying to put this on the gas canister. Let me see. Can I get it on him? One, one fell sweep. Oh, I've done it. Look at that. First go. Although I've probably got a blood blister now. Right, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. And I'm going to have a little tot in it as well. Oops. Oh, the sun's sinking now. Turn this up. Oh, this is so nice. I've not had a brew um, since the journey here this morning. I had one in car with me. Coffee and whiskey, it's nice, isn't it? I said it before, I'm not a whiskey drinker, but in coffee, I like it. Right, well, it's 20 to 9. I've just had my tea, you've just had an instant mash and bacon, broccoli concoction. No, it's not, doesn't do out for me that. I've tried it twice now, and no, I won't be doing that again, certainly not for a while. Um, I think I'm going to have an early night. I'm, I'm not going to sleep just now. Um, I might read for a bit and listen to a podcast, but I'm, I feel tired. It's, it's been a long, long time since I've done a 14 mile, and certainly with a big pack. Um, listen, I'll, I'll tell you what, all sorts of we weird bird noises outside here. Someone's screeching over there now. I don't know what that is. Sounds like someone's been attacked. There's, there's peewits calling still in dark. I've heard curlews, I've heard drumming snipe. I've heard some red grouse. I'm really intrigued by that noise over there. Yeah, all sorts of like weird birdie noises. It's quite nice, really. Anyway, yeah, I'm, go I'm going to wrap it up there for tonight. I'm tired, <laughs> really tired. I don't, I don't feel like talking much. I feel like lying down. Um, so I'll speak to you in the morning. Good night. <laughs> Morning folks, it's uh, six o'clock but I just realised that the clocks went forward last night so it's really five o'clock so it's still pretty dark outside. Uh, quite, quite tired but woke up pretty early, been awake probably about an hour. I don't know if you can hear all that, I mean I, I love a dawn chorus but that's kept me awake a bit. Blackbird singing over there. There's been a snipe drumming and the curlews and lapwings have been giving it some as well. So I might as well, I might as well stop awake now. Um, so I'm going to brew up. Parched, really thirsty. Um, have a snack, I'll just have a cereal bar or something. And then I'll try and get away as, a, as early as possible. Just checking for condensation here. There is, there is quite a bit inside the tent but it's a, it's a cool morning. So anyway, I'll speak to you later on. So I'm on my way now, about half a mile from the campsite, it's 25 to 8. Nice early start, I like early starts. The mist has come down off the moors, a bit of, I don't know, I think a temperature inversion going on. There's a very light frost this morning, a bit nippy. Uh, the next sort of place of significance I'm going to reach is a little village of Orme. Now, in the past when I've stopped there, there's like a little delicatessen attached to the pub. You can get a nice sausage butty and that, but... Easter Sunday this morning, I've just heard the church bells down the valley and I think I'm going to get there before nine o'clock so it's unlikely I'm going to get some up there but we'll see, I've still got a few snacks with me. Oh, 
Over my shoulder here is the kind of locally famous underground house. It's called, good name, Underhill. It's like a hobbit house. It's got beautiful inside door, swimming pool. Oh, just, just a really nice, unusual, quirky house. If I think on, I'll, I'll put a link beneath so you can have a look inside. It really is somewhere else. Well, that was the village of home. And the delicatessen was shut, even though they'd left the bloody sign outside saying open. Got all my hopes up then. Nice village that, Lo loads of history. Nice old cottages, lots of date stones again. I love my date stones. And I feel now like I'm on this side of the circular walk. I'm sort of back on my me, me own sort of country, grit stone and stuff. Quite a different feel on this side of the valley. This morning mist is showing absolutely no signs of shifting. I think I'm going to be stuck in this till I get back to the car. It's slightly curtailing my enjoyment. The next village I am heading for is Upper Thong. And Upper Thong is where Bill Owen and Peter Salis are buried from last of the summer wine. Now I did go to see Bill Owen's grave a few years ago. Peter Salis was still alive then, but they're buried next to each other, I believe. Interesting man, Bill Owen. Uh, politically interesting. And also, he was heavily involved in the start of the Keep Sunday Special campaign, which I think is a nice thing. When I was younger, I used to love Sundays when all the shops were shut and the roads were dead. Nice and peaceful. Interesting looking pub here in Upper Thong, the Royal Oak. I can't quite tell if it's still open and operational. On to Google. Well, it's cowboy time and I am just approaching the next village of Netherthong. Still not managed to find an open shop where I could get something nice, nice warm and tasty for my breakfast. But from Netherthong, I don't think it's that far to Honley, maybe a couple of miles. In fact, what am I talking about? I should be celebrating that there's no shops open. Keep Sunday special. And not just any old Sunday, it's Easter Sunday. I've just noticed this orchard here, just at the bottom of the hill down here. There's a side, looks to be a cider press. So what if they make, make and sell their own cider? That's, that's something to Google and potentially come back for. So, Honley and civilization approaches. And uh, I'm, I'm, I might do my last piece to camera now because there's people down here and they're going to think I'm right here by talking to this. So, what can I say? about the home valley circular. Well, do you know what? I've absolutely loved it. It's given me everything I've wanted from a walk. I was looking for spring, found me springy things, swallows, flowers, butterflies yesterday. Today has been a bit gloomy. Uh, but that's, well, I don't know. In fact, it's brightening up on the horizon over there. I might have to pause the camera in a minute. Too many people here, I'll come back to you. Right, next bit. Um, I've loved the, the historical element to it. The, the, some of the villages are fabulous. And I've made a, a mental log of all the pubs that I didn't manage to go in. And I'm going to make a point of coming over here and visiting all them. Another thing that I've enjoyed is, is sort of the footpaths. You really feel like you're walking in the footsteps of old weavers, farmers, shepherds. Coffin roots, uh, Luddites, radicals, a lot goes on around here, a, lot, a lot's gone on, shall we say, in the past around here, and you really feel like you're sort of immersing yourself in it, if that doesn't sound too pretentious. 
Right, there's a car here, I'll just pause again. <laughs> Back again. But what has made this walk extra special is the people I've met. Uh, when you're walking up at mountains and stuff like that, you, you just meet fellow walkers and stuff, which, which is nice. But here, I've met a whole range of people, really. Interesting people, I've had some right good conversations. George especially, what a chap he was. Right, I am just approaching housing estate and it's going to be busy, so I'm going to bid my farewells, I think. I might just do a few, if I find a few little historical nuggets in the centre of Antley, I might just give a little bit more, but this is the last of me talking. So, thanks for watching, look after yourselves, and I'll see you next time.